Thank you. Uh, so, uh, good afternoon, everyone. So today I'm very happy to be here to share my work with you. As you see that the title of our work is, uh, is this. Uh, so we focus on the numerical solutions for such a coupled problem. And for me, it is an interesting topic. Uh, so during my talk, first, I would like to introduce a bit about the background or the motivation why we are interested in such a problem. After that, it's a problem formulation. Then the discretization scheme will be shown. Mm, then it's the most important part is numerical method. Uh, after that is the numerical experiment. I show some experiment in order to illustrate the efficiency of our proposed method. Uh, finally, it's a short conclusion. So now the coupling between the free flow and the prose media uh, has received many attentions, uh, has received many attentions due to its Better the applications in many fields, such as the filtration process, the biological things, and the flooding simulation with water treatment, and so on. It is a challenge task, things. Each problem is based on a separate model, and we need some interface conditions to connect these two parts. As you see here, we need some interface conditions. It's kind of the bridge connecting the free flow and the flow in the pulse medium. Mm. Many people have already done the theoretical study, see here, and we focus on the numerical solutions for the discrete problem. And related uh, literatures can also be shown as well. Mm, so the coupled problem is defined on a bounded domain here. Gamma is the interface between the pulse median and the, and the free flow. Here the lower part is the pulse median, and the upper part is the uh, free flow. The pulse median is assumed to be rigid and be fully saturated with uh, incompressible Newtonian fluid. Uh, the, uh, it is modeled by Darcy equation. Here, uh, we consider the mixed formulation of Darcy equation since it allows us to directly approximate the velocity. So the unknown for Darcy equation is the velocity and pressure. And uh, K is a hydraulic conductivity tensor. And here, we only consider, uh, in this case, uh, just for convenience, for the free flow, um, we use the uh, Stokes equation. The unknowns are still the velocity and the pressure. Uh, here, sigma is a stress tensor, and F is some um, prescribed force. We have the relations between the stress force and the pressure and velocity. So by applying these relations to the first equation, we obtain the velocity and the stress formulation of Stokes equation. OK. So as, as I said before, we need some interface conditions connecting these two parts. Um, in order to describe the interface conditions, we fix a normal vector to the interface to be like this. And uh, tau is denoted as a tangential vector at the interface. Um, across the interface, the continuity of the uh, uh, mass uh, and also the normal stresses should be guaranteed. This gives rise to the first two conditions. Apart from these two, a so-called Beavers-Joseph Sapman condition is also considered. Um, it has been widely used, and uh, uh, it is supported by some numerical experiment. It describes the relations between the tangential velocity and the flow stresses. So here, alpha is some dimensionless parameter. If we neglect the second term in this condition, we, ha we have the no-slip condition, which is much easier. Mm. Uh, respect to the discretization scheme, the finite volume method on staggered grid is considered. So by using such a discretization scheme, there is no oscillations in the, uh, uh, in the solution field. And also the mass conservation is guaranteed. In this figure, we show the uh, locations for different unknowns. So you see that the prior unknowns are located at the center of each block. And uh, the velocity component are located at the center of each block faces. We also displace in different colors the, uh, the control volumes corresponding to each variable. Yeah. And in these three figures, uh, to describe the discretization, we have to fix the adequate indexing. So in these three figures, the unknowns are depicted together with the control volume and the variables around it. So the discretization for the separate Darcy and the Stokes problem have no difficulties. We mainly focus on the discretization at the interface. Mm, we aim, our aim is to, is to find some discrete equations for the 
uh, unknowns at the interface. So that is to say, we try to find some formulations for vertical velocity v. Mm, so by in Integrate, um, by integrating the Stokes equation over such a half volume, which is displayed in red, we obtain this. Uh, the approximation of sigma yy in n location is easy. And uh, in order to approximate sigma yy in s, we have to use the second interface condition, which is connected to the continuity of the normal stresses, like this. So here, and we do not have the pressure at the interface. However, we can obtain it from the Darcy equation. Um, about the stress x, y, in E and the W is a little bit complicated. Here, we only take this one, for example, it's the same. Uh, to approximate this, we have to use the beavers joseph Zuckman condition at this point. So from the beavers joseph Zuckman condition, we can have the velocity in here. So this u in here, by applying this u to sigma x, y, e, then it's easy to obtain. Finally, um, by applying all of the stresses to here, we have the. Did you want a formula? Oh, it's fine. It's up to, it's up to you. Right? Okay, you okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so, Sorry. <laughs> thank you. So finally, by applying all of these relations to this equation, we have the discrete formulations at the interface. Mm. Now we come to the most important part, numerical method. Let's look at a bit of the structure of our problem. So for the separate Darcy and Stokes problem, they are all have the saddle point structure. So for both systems, B transpose and B uh, represents the discrete gradient operator and the negative discrete uh, divergence operator. Mm. For the Stokes equation, A is a, re a discrete representation for a Laplacian type operator here. And for the Darcy equation, A is a discrete representation of this operator. Okay, now for the coupled system, if we arrange our unknowns in such a way, that means we put the velocity for, of the whole coupled domain first, then the pressure follows. Again, for the big system, we obtain the saddle point structure. For such a kind of system, uh, the multigrain method together with Vlava's smoother can be used. So multigrain uh, method is a quite efficient uh, numeric technique for the nonlinear and linear systems of equations. And uh, how do we choose the smoother is a quite important part. So in here, Vlava's smoother is considered. The smoother is obtained by splitting the discrete operator in this way. So here, ma is some suitable smoother corresponding to the operator A, and omega is very important, is some relaxation parameter. By applying such a splitting to the original equation, we obtain the, a single iterative step that can be described in two steps. Uh, so first, we apply the smoother ma for the velocity, and after we get the approximation of velocity, we can use it to update the pressure here. Be careful with this relaxation parameter omega. The performance of our smoother is um, dependent on this uh, parameter. So we use local Fourier analysis to help us choose the optimal value of this parameter. So local, uh, local Fourier, Fourier analysis is a uh, most powerful tool for the quantitative analysis of multigrade. Mm. The Vudava smoother is studied in the framework of LFA, and uh, an analytical bound of the smoothing factor is obtained. Here, the smoothing factor is bounded by mu A and mu S. So mu A is the smoothing factor for velocity. So here. And uh, in our case, this suitable smoother MA could be the symmetric Gauss-Saddle method, which contains one forward, one backward sweeps for all the velocities in the computational domain. For the pressure, our system can, uh, can be transformed with short complement. And for the velocity, it's the same from the first equation. And for pressure, we shall apply a simple Richardson iteration to get it here. So mu s is the smoothing uh, factor for uh, pressure. And uh, you see it is related to this relaxation parameter. So we know that the optimal relaxation parameter depends on the maximum and the minimum eigenvalues of the short complement. 
over high frequency. With all of this information, the multi-block, multi-grid algorithm is shown that is shown here. Mm, so during the smoothing steps, all the velocity components are updated uh, earlier before the um, prior unknowns will be relaxed. The coupled domain is divided into two parts, which is corresponding to the pulse media and the Stokes region. Uh, the communications between these two blocks is quite necessary. So the blocks, uh, Stokes region is extended by this overlap region, see here. Mm, here I show the two grid algorithm. So first, the velocity unknowns uh, on the whole com uh, computational domain are relaxed. The second step is the transfer from the Stokes region to Darcy region, that is to see uh, this vertical velocity uh, in the, at the interface of Stokes part is transferred to the Darcy part. See this red dot. After that, we can update the prior unknowns for the whole computational domain. Then we transfer this prior from Darcy part to Stokes part to this overlap region. After we have all of the uh, new approximations of unknown, we can compute the residue. After we have the residue, the residue, uh, the residue is again transferred from the Darcy part to Stokes part. See this green color? Mm. Then we can restrict the residue to cost grade and solve the error equation, residue equation on the cost grade exactly. After that, we obtain the error on the cost grade and we transfer this error from the uh, Stokes part to the Darcy part, and this arrow can be interpolated to fine grade and used it to uh, get the new approximation of the solution. So this is the two grade algorithm. Okay, uh, so this is algorithm. Uh, this is a two-grade algorithm. Um, by recursion, um, the multi-grade algorithm follows direct, uh, uh, straightforwardly. And actually, this algorithm requires little data communication. And during the communication, the transfer is only is always only in one direction. And this can be easily implemented in parallel. And furthermore, I want to emphasize that in our algorithm the communications is performed in, in, in every level of the grid instead of only on the finest grid. So now I want to show some comparison result between the local Fourier analysis and the asymptotic convergence result. So remember that this relaxation parameter depends on the uh, eigenvalues of the short complement. Usually we perform a local Fourier analysis to obtain these parameters, but in here, we can derive some formulations of this parameter, so it is very easy for us to, in our calculations. For Stokes' problem, this relaxation parameter is a constant. And for Darcy equation, this omega, you see, it depends on the mesh size and uh, the coefficient. So it means that in our multigrade algorithm, this omega is changing in different levels of the grade. So the first table, I show the two grade convergence factors predicted by LFA. This, uh, this is the result for the separate Darcy problem. This is for the separate Stokes problem. This table, I show the asymptotic convergence factors for the coupled problem. So all of these results are, are obtained with the changing of the smoothing steps and the coefficients. If we compare this table, you see here, we obtain this number, and here we obtain this number, and in this table, we obtain 0 0.6. So it means that the asymptotic convergence factors matches very well with the worst 
of these two great convergence factors predicted by LFA for the separate problems. It also indicates that our discretization at the interface and uh, together with the proposed method is in the most efficient way. Now we come to the numerical experiment part. The first example is an uh, analytical test. The exact solution are shown like this, and uh, <coughs> at the interface, the uh, Weber's Joseph Zubman condition is considered. And for the outer boundaries, the conditions are described like this. So in this table, uh, in this table um, uh, I show the difference between the numerical solution with the uh, uh, exact solution. So the maximum norm of the error for each variable on different grid sizes is shown. Mm, the stopping criterion for this test is that the initial residue should be reduced by a factor of 10 to the power minus 10. If we see this table, it is clear that we obtain the second order accuracy for all the variables except the uh, pressure in the Stokes domain where we obtain the first order. In addition for this test, I also, saw the, uh, also uh, show the convergence history. Here we use a double cycle together with two pre and two post smoothing steps. Mm. Yeah. So the convergence performance of multigrid is independent of mesh size, and it takes only around 13 iterations to reach the stopping criterion, which is very efficient. Furthermore, uh, we would also investigate the robustness of our method with a wide range of the coefficients. This is important since in the geoscientific applications. This kind of parameters are typically very small. Mm, so here is again we use a double cycle and uh, the convergence performance is quite good. Finally, it's a more realistic and uh, complicated problem. So this is our computational domain. The lower part is parse median, the upper part is the free flow. And the, uh, and the geometry is divided into four different blocks. And uh, across the interface, uh, this condition is uh, used again. And uh, for the rest, boundary conditions, they are shown in this figure. And by using our proposed method, we obtain very excellent uh, convergence factor, which, which is around 0 0.2. So here, I show the numerical solutions, uh, vertical velocity along the vertical center line in the couple domain. All of these uh, results are obtained on different grid sizes. Here, grid one is the finest grid, so you see that if the grid is finer, then the solutions are much closer to each other. It indicates that we obtain some convergent solution. Uh, here is the um, uh, pressure on the couple domain. And in order to see this part clearly, I also, saw, I also show the solutions of pressure in the power medium. So furthermore, I want, I want to emphasize that our algorithm, the communications, is performed in every level of the grid, not only on the finest grid. This is very accurate and uh, also efficient. So finally, the so conclusion. So we formulate the couple model, and to solve this couple model, we use multi grid method together with Budava smoother. So local Fourier analysis help us to determine the uh, relaxation parameter in our smoother, and also the um, it help us to predict the symptotic convergence factor. And furthermore, our method is proposed uh, is confirmed by the numerical test. Yeah, that's it. Thanks for coming. Sorry? You described your method without post smoothing, but you uh, did use post smoothing. Uh, yeah. This so doesn't matter actually in the algorithm part, I think. Well, it's a symmetric problem. It would seem odd to me not to use post smoothing. But we always use post smoothing in our numerical test. Yeah. Thanks. You would probably want to do post smoothing if you were to use it. Maybe in a precondition that way. Other questions? Any chance? There is a one smooth. 
Yeah. One small thing. Yeah. One small thing. You do two two. Yeah, two two. Yeah, you I do one one. Yeah, uh, actually, I tried several uh, iteration. Um, for this is a W two two is the most efficient, and uh, W one one also works. But uh, for the analytical test, I remember that V one one doesn't work. It's divergent. But V two two with three three it works. So V one one V two doesn't work. Right? V one one doesn't work. But for the rest, if you increase the smoothing steps, then it works. Yeah. Oh, furthermore, oh, sorry. No, no um, on the slope system, you could also use the distributed smoother. I, I don't know whether this would work also with the coupled system, but uh, did you think in that direction? Mm, you mean the distributed distribu smoother was originally introduced by Trump in the 80s, like the 80s. And it's probably the most efficient one if you have the stack of grids. Yeah, actually, I haven't considered like that, but this is a good comment. Thank you. Yeah, so I have uh, another question: whether you have plans to compare your approach? Uh, there have been several solvers for the mm -hmm. couple Stokes Darcy problem proposed in the literature. Do you have plans to compare it uh, with other methods? Uh, yours also very good. You you mean that we compare our results with a different smoother or with a different different, different approaches? Different approach, for example, the precondition curl uh, method. Yeah, not now, but maybe in the future we can do that. All right, just thank you. Thank you.